This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. Greetings. In this video, we're going to talk about a method called limits by factoring. Let's get started. All right, so here's our first example. In the first example, we have a polynomial in the numerator, polynomial in the denominator. We're finding the limit uh, of this rational expression as x approaches 3. Now, let's take a look at what the problem is. So normally what you think of, you know, you do is that you take this value 3 and then you'd, you'd plug it in for x, right? I mean, all the x's. I mean, so you'd plug it in every one of these x's. Now, if I just take a look at the denominator, so the heck with the numerator, let's look at the uh, denominator. So if I plug that value in, if I were to put 3 cubed minus 9 times 3, I'm going to get 27 minus 27, and I get a zero in the denominator. You can't have zeros in the denominator. So what I'm saying is you can't just plug in the value and evaluate it. So unfortunately, this problem, oops, as I moved this thing around before, so uh, this problem is going to require some finesse. Now, the finesse that I'm referring to is going to be dealing with factoring. Okay, so if we talk about factoring, uh, let's see if we can get a better color. Like you'll notice in the denominator, I can factor out an x. And I get an x squared minus 9. Then you think, oh, I could even factor this farther. I could put this as x minus 3, x plus 3. Okay, so when you're factoring, what I always suggest that people do is cross out the old factors. Okay, so that's that's factored, that's factored. These of all are all just different versions of this original denominator. Okay, so now this is our final factored answer with our denominator. Now let's look at the numerator. So now the numerator, you can see that all these terms contain an x. So I'm going to factor out the x. So I get x squared plus x minus 12. Okay, then what can we do? We could factor this. I could factor this trinomial that's inside the parentheses. So this is x plus 4, x plus, minus 3. Okay, and again, once you're done factoring, cross out these. And I'm trying to do this lightly so that you could still see the original problem and see the steps. Okay, now the point of us canceling or I should say the point of us factoring is so that we can what's called cancel. It's like I'm dividing by common factors. So in other words, I'm going to divide the denominator and the numerator both by x. Okay. Then you'll see that they also have an x minus 3. So I'm going to divide the top and bottom by x minus 3. That's what we call canceling, right? Okay. So now after this all of this mess has been done, you could see that our limit has now been transformed. Now we're taking the limit of what looks like an entirely different function. It's a reduced function. It's the same function, but it's been reduced. Now, uh, for the purposes of finding limits, you could do this. So now what we could do is plug in this value 3. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value 3 and I'm going to plug it in whatever there's an x. Okay, so in doing that, see now all the times before I have to keep on bringing down the limit, but now I'm actually going to evaluate. So I'm putting in this value 3. So this is 3 plus 4, and this is 3 plus 3. So clearly you can see that I'm getting 7 sixths. And 7 sixths is the limit of this function. Let's take a look at a second example. So here's our second problem. In our second problem, we can see we have another rational expression. And um, like our last problem, what you could do is you could substitute in these values, right? Like for instance, if I'm gonna find the limit as x approaches six, I could substitute in all those x values, the value x equals six. So I'm only gonna take a look at the denominator, but Imagine if I just plugged in the denominator. Normally I would do this with both the numerator and denominator, but just looking at the denominator, you're gonna see that's two times six squared 
minus 11 times 6 minus 6. So this is 2 times 36, right? Just doing some uh, 6 times 11, just doing some, a little bit of arithmetic. This is 72 minus 66 minus 6. This is 72 minus 72. And you can see we're getting a 0 in the denominator. Okay, so zeros are not allowed to be in the denominator. Okay, what does this mean? I can't just substitute, right? So I'm gonna back up the bus. I'm gonna back up the bus because I gotta do something else. Okay, so what do I do? Well, this is where we're going to use this technique called factoring, right? So, hmm, let's look at the numerator. Now the numerator is easier than the denominator because of the leading coefficients. Uh, this leading coefficient here is 1, which makes this easier to factor. So you'll notice that this should be, just taking a quick mental look at this, this has got to be 6 times 4. And let's see, I want more negatives. There you go. So now this adds up to be negative 2 and multiplies to be negative 24. Numerator, easy. Denominator, not so easy. Okay, and the reason is this leading coefficient. So let's factor a little bit differently. So I'm gonna to have to multiply 2x times x. See, before I could just multiply x times x and I get x squared, right? Because I only had an x squared here. But I now have to multiply 2x times x to get a 2x squared. That's what makes this harder. And what makes it harder is trying to figure out how to get this middle term, negative 11. It's always more complicated when this leading coefficient is not one. Okay, well, I'm gonna still try to do, and, and there's kind of a, a tip here. If you look at the numerator, you're thinking, well, I'm hoping something factors, right? So that means I'm probably going to be matching a numerator factor with a denominator. Now, not all, always, but you're hoping that's what's gonna happen. So in this particular case, um, I'm going to try six. Okay, that would mean six times one. Six times one is gonna give you six, but I need a negative. One of these needs to be negative. Now to figure out which one's negative, I'm gonna multiply the inside, I get one x. And then I'm gonna multiply the outside, I get 12 x. Now the only way this could be a negative 11 x here in the center is if this is negative and this is positive. Now this would add up to be negative 11 x. Okay, so that means this has to be negative and this is positive. Okay, a lot going on there? A lot going on there. Okay, that those this type of factoring is more difficult. Cross out these things. Maybe I should do this in a different color. Okay, so I'm going to lightly cross these out. So these guys are gone, and I changed or transformed these polynomials now into factored polynomials. And the point is, I now want to cancel. So what does that mean? I'm dividing the numerator by negative, uh, x minus 6, and I'm dividing the denominator by x minus 6, thereby canceling. That's what it means to cancel. Okay? It means you're just dividing by common factors. Okay, so my numerator now is only x plus 4, and the denominator is 2x plus 1. All right, now, just like uh, the last problem, now I'm going to substitute. So wherever there's an x, I'm gonna substitute in this value. Now, now that I'm evaluating, I no longer need to write this limit. I now can just go into the evaluation. So this is gonna be uh, six plus four. This is gonna be two times six plus one. All right, maybe I should put some equal signs here. <clears throat> and here in the numerator, it looks like I'm getting 10. In the denominator, I'm getting 12 plus 1. So I'm getting 10 over 13. And there you go. So there's the answer to our second example. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out literally hundreds of instructional videos interactive quizzes, and lessons. Have a great day. Take it to the limit.
Yeah, that's it. I don't have anything else. That's it. Can't think of another limit. 